labour and did not prescribe appropriate compensations to people whose equipment and trucks were touched. But in a very defensive turn, Dominic Nitiwo disclosed the operation which was carried out by a personnel from the Operation Vanguard was aimed at protecting water bodies. The Bimbala MP explained the vehicle of the Sun Winner were torched to send a strong message. Operation Vanguard is a national operation to save one, our environment, stop illegal mining and save our water bodies. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, so the military went there for the fifth time and decided that they were sending a very strong signal to anyone who decides that they will take the law into their own hands. To First Deputy Speaker Joseph Oseowusu, such extreme measures are what's required to curb the Galamse menace. The Bakwai MP repeated his call for such people to be shot. Mr. Speaker, extreme behavior must be met with extreme response. We are dealing with people who are determined at every cost to make their money, notwithstanding the damage they do to the environment. Second Deputy Speaker Alban Bagbin, however, disagreed. He demanded a review of activities of Operation Vanguard. Mr. Speaker, there is nobody in Ghana that is happy with what is happening in the environment. And so, Mr. Speaker, I hope that the country will have taken a step backwards for us to sit down and see how we can fashion out a better measure to be able to have control of this issue. For Minority Leader Haruna Idrisu, the justification of the Defence Minister was untenable. Minister for Defence, we informed that you are not about the loss of guidance. The other forces are not about the loss of Ghana. The military is not about the loss of Ghana. But we are shocked that if you use legitimate due process in accord with law to preserve the environment and water bodies, you have our absolute support. Majority leader Oseche Mensa Bonsu argued people must not be allowed to dissipate natural resources in the name of making a living. Speaking to GH1 News after proceedings, Kumbungu MP Ras Mubarak and his Sanrigu colleague ABA Fuseni took on the Defence Minister for his stance. We would encourage the state to enforce its laws, but we will not to support the state in an act of elegance. They are perpetuating an act of elegance. I think this uplifts with the defense minister. The defense minister is becoming increasingly arrogant, and especially in sometimes responses that he makes to people. He should be very careful that power is a transient thing. He should not let the power go into his head that today is defense minister. Even under the same government, he can find himself nowhere. So he should be very... Now let's take a quick trip to uh, Kumasi where the Asante Mampon Divisional Police Command in the Ashanti region have arrested suspects in connection to a robbery at a total fuel station at Mampon Bosofo in the Ashanti region. The suspects who are believed to be foreigners have been terrorizing residents for a while now. Ashanti Regional Police Commander COP Ken Yebwa disclosed this at a news conference in Kumasi. Ultimate FM's Isaac Bidiakon covered this program and came through with this report.
Weeks ago, the suspected robbers attacked Mampombosu Fort Total filling station at gunpoint, leaving David Frimpong, the branch manager, with head injuries, even though the police responded timely to the scene after receiving distress call from victims, the suspect had already fled the scene. The five-man gang made away with cash sum of 11,000 Ghana cities and mobile phones amidst gunshots. Ashanti Regional Police Commander C.O.P. Ken Yabua disclosed this at a news conference in Kumase. All the suspects have admitted being part of their robbery in their individual caution statements made with the police and are currently in our custody. An arrest, the police had information to the fact that the armed robbers numbering about six had attacked and were robbing attendants at the Mampong Bosunfo filling station. The police proceeded to the place, but the robbers had already left the scene, leaving behind Dennis Frimpong, the branch manager who had been assaulted and had some cuts. He was rushed to the hospital where he was treated and discharged. In a similar development, the security detail of Vice President Dr. Mehmed Baumia have handed over 23-year-old Sise Ibrahim, who claimed to be a student of the University of Ghana for impersonation. The suspect was arrested at the Kumasi airport during the arrival of the Vice President when he posed as a security detail. Ultimate FM, uh, Isaac Bidiako again. The Vice President, Dr. Mahamudu Bawumia, was in Kumasi over the last weekend to grace an event at the Kumasi Central Mosque. Upon arrival of the Vice President, a young man was spotted in military uniform at the airport whose demeanor seemed suspicious. Ashanti Regional Police Commander COP Ken Yeboah disclosed this at a news conference in Kumasi. He was arrested and then he said he had a uniform from his brother. His brother is a uh, military officer who is now on peacekeeping. And then he's, in his absence, he went and then took the uh, military uniform and wore it from Accra to Kumasi on Saturday during the Molib. Well, back in the national capital, Accra, the First Lady, Rebecca Ekufuado, is calling for concerted efforts from all stakeholders, particularly the media, in order to undertake initiatives geared towards the promotion of quality health care delivery in the country. She has specifically called on the EIB network to partner her in her anti-malaria campaign aimed at decreasing the country's infant mortality ratio. She made a call Tuesday when some leaders and staff of the EIB network paid her a visit. The executives of the EIB network, including Chief Executive Officer Nathan Anochia DC, Group Managing Editor Aram Bashan, GH1 TV's news editor Nanaba Namwa and her deputy Danswa Ewuku and other presenters and staff, paid a courtesy call on the First Lady. The team presented her some flowers and a cake as a gift for her birthday, which fell on Monday. Speaking during the brief engagement, the wife of the president, Rebecca Ekufuado, expressed gratitude to the EIB team and called for concerted efforts in pushing the agenda for development, particularly in the area of health and gender. She expressed optimism in collaborating with EIB to work on some projects. Infanta Malaria is doing a lot of wonderful work. For the past 12 years, we've done a whole lot around the country. But Chief's Clinic is the main thing that we think would help a lot of uh, the um, uh, rural areas to find easy access for women to get to um, the clinic. So we've um, built about three. Um, yes, and we continue to look for um, sponsorship uh, to build a few more. So we'll be happy to partner you. The CEO of the EIB network, Nathan Anochia DC, assured the First Lady of the Broadcasting Network support to help promote initiatives that would help in developing the country. For infantile malaria, your you know foundation, I know it's very dear to your heart. We want to also pledge our support and help you in terms of the chips compound. If there's something that we can do, I believe that is something that we can you know all drive to realize. We have a flagship program on a Star Woman, headed by my great Marianne. 
Kolache, and uh, we'll be having that discussion. And we want to know how it is also, you know, faring at the moment. On her part, the group managing editor, Aram Bashan, underscored the importance of quality health care and women empowerment to the growth of every country, noting that the Star Woman Project would also be associated with the First Lady in changing lives. Of course, we've been monitoring your work. We, we, I think on behalf of the team, we think you're doing a wonderful job. So it's a kudos. And like our boss said, how we can uh, partner you do that. A lot is happening in rural Ghana that Ghana is not aware of. So definitely you need a holding of hand uh, by the media, a very powerful media group like EIB coming. We, we make it big and better like our boss. So it will be good to partner you on this project and just to bring the visibility and the agency um, to the issues that exactly that you have been focusing on. So we can't wait for uh, starting of that project together. The short meeting with the president's wife was to also officially invite the first lady to GH1 TV's upcoming forum on menstrual hygiene, which seeks to bring together stakeholders to discuss pertinent issues concerning menstruation and menstrual hygiene in Ghana. Because if you go to rural uh, uh, Ghana, there are so many children who haven't got access to sanitary pads. They, they haven't even seen sanitary pads before, and it's inhibiting them from going to school. So they menstruate five days in a month, and because they don't have uh, pads, they're using rocks. When they go to school, the boys laugh at them. There are so many cultural practices that is putting stumbling blocks in their path, in, in their effort to access education. So we have a forum coming up on menstrual hygiene somewhere next month, on the 19th of April. Uh, if you're in the country, we'd like you to be a special guest of honor for us to speak to that issue. Why children should be educated on menstruation and why access to menstrual parts should be pushed. Yes, so we brought you an official um, invitation. Thank you. <laughs> Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. You're watching News Tonight. We're live on GH1 Television. We'll be right back with more news. Stay with us. Water gives life. Water is life. Enjoy the pure, refreshing taste of awake, purified drinking water, which comes in a uniquely designed bottle with a lemon green tap. Water is your perfect way to stay hydrated. And remember, for every bottle you buy, an amount will be donated to the National Covid Thoracic Center, Ghana. Awake, purified drinking water. One for life. For bulk purchase, contact 
my dear rice for special people now available royal dear gold so what makes storm energy drink different look into the bottle And we are back. Happy to know you're still here with us on news tonight. It's time to bring you insight. Now, Ghana's population rate has seen a staggering increment from the 28 million recorded in 2016 to 29 million in the first quarter of 2018. This has resulted in slow rates of economic development. Global growth rate stands at 1.5%, but Ghana has a growth rate of 2.5%. This increased growth rate is contributing to slow economic development. Well, there's so many implications. If, you, if you're growing, it means you have to consume. But if you are using all your money on taking care of, uh, you know how fast children grow, you know, education, clothing, shelter, and all that. So then it's difficult for you to invest, for the government to, to, to fall on for development. And secondly, if you have that many numbers, you may not be able to have quality education. I mean, you have to face it because the teacher-people ratio will be compromised. Available statistics indicate that Ghana's population rate stood at 28 million in 2016, but has increased to 29 million just in the first quarter of 2018. Executive Director for the National Population Council, Dr. Leticia Adelaide Apia, wants birth rate checked. Oh, our number will surely will, will, would increase, but the rate of increase is the issue. Increase, yes, we will, but the rate of increase. When you have a growth rate that is high and you have young people who are coming in, there are some immediate needs that you cannot gloss over. If we need vaccines, we can use the money to construct roads. According to the National Population Council, high birth rate has negative implication on the quality of life. We'll stay on population a bit longer and put some faces to the figure of 29 million you have had. Decisions concerning the number of children a couple should have are very personal. Now, the reality is that this fundamental human right comes with complications, especially when parents have very low incomes. The National Population Council of Ghana is therefore advocating accessible and affordable family planning services across the country. The council is also afraid the population explosion can affect Ghana's development. The question, however, is, are people ready to employ family planning services? Here's a report by Alice Aite who attempted to get a response to this question. 34-year-old Alice Jew is a mother of five at Koligono, a suburb of Accra. She had her first child at the age of 21 and tells me although she was not ready, she eventually had to start making a family. 
Within a short period, she and her husband had reproduced about four more children, with the last one being just three months old. Alice explains life is tough for her family of seven. <laughs> Decisions concerning the number of children a couple should have are personal, but it has implications. Just like many other people, Alice has her own reservations about family planning and says she is not ready to use any contraceptive, although she wishes not to give birth again. Across the world, some countries which faced explosive population growth have come up with birth control policies that are working for them. China, for instance, has the one-child policy. In India, the state offers newly wedded couples cash grants to wait for two years before they have their first child, while in other parts of that country, having more than two children disqualifies one from holding public office. But here in Ghana, there is no such policy, a reason some stakeholders believe the country's population growth may affect development. Dr. Leticia Apia is the executive director of the National Population Council. She is calling for the family planning services to be made easily accessible and affordable. The women are getting pregnant to babies they don't want, but for lack of probably family planning uh, service. When you go to any community, you, you, you're supposed to be able to have a family planning service anytime you want, anywhere. Just like the weighing, just like the immunizations. So now all the children are immunized. You know, you get about 77% of our children being fully immunized. But family planning uptake is less than 30%. The council is alarmed by the annual population growth, which has for the past three decades grown by 2.5% yearly, translating into between 700,000 and 800,000 people. This rate is more than the global target of annual population growth of 1.5%. However, speaking in an interview with the news team, a senior research fellow at the Institute of Economic Affairs, Professor John Asafwaje, disagreed with the National Population Council's figure. The growth rate has actually been trending downwards. So it was 3.54% in around, I think, 82, 83 and currently it's about 2.2%. And the projections show that by 2040, it will be about 1.7%. So naturally, it's trending downwards. Uh, in other words, people are having fewer children. I believe education is one of the reasons. You know, it is still a concern because by the year 2040, we will have about 44 million people in Ghana, which I think is a lot. He was worried that shrinking job market and the weak economy are compounding the already harsh economic matters. He, however, joined the head of the Population Council to advocate easy access to contraceptives. We need to anticipate, you know, that there are going to be more people living in the cities by 2030, 2040. Uh, and so, you know, the city um, planners and decision makers, policy makers, should prepare. So that still means that we should prepare. But personally, if you look at the statistics, uh, I, I think it's in, encouraging in the sense that people are tending to have fewer, families are tending to have fewer children. Until concrete policy is put in place to check the country's population growth, many families will continue to be impoverished. Alice Aite, GH1 News. Well.
Imani Africa does not necessarily agree with the economic implications. President of the policy think tank, Franklin Kuju, says the size of the population may not necessarily be the problem. He challenged government to put in place a proper system of governance and economic structure to accommodate the numbers. He reasons the increase in population will not impede economic growth. Rather, it should stimulate it. Lazy economists actually assume that population is a problem. I, I kept saying that if you've developed your population properly, the ultimate resource is the human mind, as human beings. At this stage, population is not a problem. I don't think it is. For that type of economics, that suggests that we are overpopulated or also, I don't believe in it. We are never overpopulated in this country. And there are countries that are far more populated than us and are more under-resourced. But they are doing far better than us. Good governance, sensible governance. You know, build a private sector that is, that is sustainable, that has a multiply effect in building the economies of the people. So nearly 30 million Ghanaians we have at this point. You've had uh, the figure. Let me give you a quick breakdown as we have seen from the United Nations Population uh, Division. Then we'll get into a conversation as to exactly what the problem is. Let's take a look at that quickly. Uh, we have 29.225 as a current population. Out of this, the male population is 50 point nine percent a representation of fourteen million eight hundred and sixty eight thousand four hundred and ninety two the female population is slightly lower forty nine point one percent uh, representing fourteen million three hundred and fifty six thousand eight hundred and fifteen I uh, well considering the women have for the children and the men are more than the women as far as the census is concerned it begs the question are the women having too many children because, you know, the men can have children. And then best this year, nine, 190,961. Let's take a look at the next slide uh, quickly, uh, where we get a breakdown of births per day. Uh, can we take a look at that now? Well, now, we'll bring you more on that uh, in a bit. But let's have a conversation right now about how... Uh, our population is growing. Should it be a source of worry or perhaps we should be thinking of how to change things uh, as our population grows to accommodate the numbers as Imani Africa says. Uh, joining me right now over Skype is Augustus uh, Jonte. He is the director for the National Population Council in the Central uh, Region. Uh, good evening Augustus. Well, I guess and if you can hear me, I think the question on the minds of many Ghanaians at the moment is uh, what accounted? We know people are having more children. Uh, the reason we, we are having a population uh, size increase. But what accounted for people wanting to have more children? Well, I, I do not think uh, he can hear me at uh, the moment. Well, I'll give it another shot. So, Gerson, I was asking... What accounted for this population increase? Hello, Augustine. Yes, hello. I'm asking about what accounted for the population increase. Okay, um, first of all, uh, population increases for reasons that are obvious to us. The first one is natural increase. That is the difference between death and the number of deaths. That will tell you the rate at which you are increasing naturally. Then when you introduce the third component, which is migration, then you can understand why uh, the population is growing. So these are the reasons. There's no other reason except that your deaths are in excess of death, and then you, your net migration rate um, is positive, meaning that you are receiving more people. But uh, the issue here is that if your net, your natural increase is higher, then the rate at which you are using to see migration, the population will still increase. So it's a question of natural increase and then migration. So, do we know the component of migrants' birth? Yes, so in, in, the, in the case of Ghana, uh, migration is not our biggest problem. Because uh, the, the net migration rate is not much of a problem like the natural increase. So uh, 
uh, in our situation, I think it is more of a problem of natural issues because uh, the rate of childbearing is higher. Absolutely. So it brings me to my question of why do you think that Ghanaians are wanting to have more children? Okay. Um, if you look at the um, parent PFR, that is the total fertility age, the average Ghanaian woman will bear like four children by the time she completes her childbearing. So if you go inside, there are reasons why a woman will have a certain number of children within the reproductive cycle, which is from 15 up to 49. If a woman marries at the age of 15, from 15 up to 49, which we consider as the reproductive age, you see that that gives us a reproductive span that is in excess of 30 years. Compare that to another woman who marries at the age of 24. You realize that the gap has been shortened. So first of all, we'll have to look at the reproductive cycle. Um, currently, the average Ghanaian woman marries at the age of 21, which means that half of the women marry when they are almost teenagers. And that actually lengthens the reproductive cycle. But the fact that you have married early doesn't necessarily mean that you have more children. There are other factors. For instance, are you ready to do family planning? What is the woman's level of education? Because an educated woman or a career woman will not have the same number of children like a woman who well, hasn't been to school. So, so in, in the event where more Ghanaian women, I mean, since two decades ago, more Ghanaian women are getting more educated. And as you have told us, that could translate into the number of children you have, the age exactly. at which you experience your first birth. I, you think that that should rather not raise this, this kind of alarm as far as the population growth is concerned. But here we are talking about the fact that we are still having more children. Something must be causing that. Have you identified what this is in spite of the progress when women have made in the past? Yes, I, I just mentioned the issue of uh, uh, family planning. Or the issue of contraceptives. Um, currently... It is about one in five Ghanaian women who use a modern method of conversation. And this is very good. You get the point. And about one in three Ghanaian women do not want to have additional debt, but do not have access to effective family planning methods. So okay, so, so, so let, let, let's be on the same page here. Let's be on the same page, uh, Augustine. Yes. The Population Council is worried about the number of births we have experienced uh, over the last decade. Between 2008 and now, we've seen about 6.3 million growth in our population. It, yeah. Will that be the case? Why will that be the case? I'm, I'm asking, in stories that we have run, we have heard the Population Council express worry about the number of births we are recording. Um, can you please say line uh, wasn't uh, quite clear? I'm saying that the Population Council is worried about the population growth, particularly in the first quarter of 2018. Yes. My question is, why would you raise such an alarm? Because from all that you have told me, Augustine, it looks like things are looking up for the country as far as population growth is concerned. If I get you right, you are saying that we shouldn't be worried that our population is increasing. Is that what you are saying? Well, should you be? Yes, I think we should. We should be worried in the sense that there are many other factors that uh, you have to consider. Already we are constrained as a country in terms of providing for our people. This has to do with education. This has to do with health. This has to do with water and sanitation. We are constrained in this area, and every additional need that is added onto our population has implications for these things that I've already mentioned. Is that point clear? 
I'm sorry, I didn't catch your last few sentences, but just hold the line for me. We have been joined in the studio by Antoinette Daroja. She is with the PPAG. One of the things you mentioned, Augustine, is the fact that uh, family planning may have played a role in all of this. Over the last maybe decade, half a decade, I don't remember seeing any of those campaigns running anymore. But let's find out whether or not Ghanaian women are patronizing family plan planning services. Then we'll find out maybe what else happened with the population increase. Antoinette, you're welcome to the program. Thank you. Are you surprised by what the Population Council is uh, telling us now with regards to the number of births we are starting to record? Um, I would say I'm not really surprised because uh, most young or most women, are, it's not everybody that is really accepting the family planning methods due to societal um, discouragements of the methods and also the misconceptions that a lot of women also have concerning the methods. Aside that, um, some also have to do with influence from friends. Probably I'm on this method, it's not working well for me. So the other party will also feel that because I am on the method, it's not working for me, it wouldn't work for me too. Mm. So most of the times they come to the facility and they'll be like, I want this particular method because a friend says, I am on this method. So basically those are the issues that we face in the facility. But you think that, you know, w with education, women acquiring education and getting to different uh, status in life, the, the, the acceptance of uh, family planning methods will be easier. But from what you're telling me, it's not exactly so. Yes, it's not everybody that feels okay accepting the method. Yes, you would discuss all the methods, you lay it bare to them as how the methods are both the short, the long, and then the permanent methods, they, they still have the choice. The client is the final person to say, yes, I want this method or I don't want this method. And you are, as a, a service provider, you are not supposed to force or impose mm. a, a service on the client. So therefore, at the end of the day, the choice is still but, in the hands of the But are client. these services easily and readily available because for the educated woman it's easier to go to the pharmacy and you know get your contraceptive yes. but let's talk about the woman outside of the city how accessible are these you know contraceptives and, and family planning methods yes the family planning methods are accessible everywhere we even for have free it's at a cost as a minimal price how it's minimal not, um just recently um, ghana health service ran the one city campaign where you get all contraceptives for one Ghana cities in mm. most of the facilities, which run for a while. And I know some facilities are even having it ongoing. And even when you get to the outskirts of Accra, the chips compounds are there, when they also provide family planning services. So I would say it is accessible everywhere. It's up to you to walk into that facility and discuss with the midwife or the health service personnel for you to know which method you want it's, and then, it's appropriate for yes, you yes now I'm, I'm going to come back to this conversation in a bit but let me show you those figures about the breakdown with regards to the 29.2 uh, million population that has been recorded for uh, this country if we could take a look at it uh, quickly uh, here on this wall well uh, this year, and uh, there, are, there have been 190,961 births. I wanted to see the breakdown for uh, daily. Beps today, 1,631. Deps this year, 52,277. Deps today, 447. Obviously, we are giving bets more than we are dying. It, things have improved for the country. Uh, but one of the things also that I, I realized with the conversation I've had with both you and Augustine over Skype is the fact that we haven't managed to break that cultural uh, thinking uh, that you need to have more children as a woman. Doesn't make the situation hopeless as far as controlling our population is concerned. I would say no. Um, the education is still ongoing, even though it's sometimes difficult when you get to some families because they still don't understand the fact that you are telling them to have a minimal birth. Mm. They look at it from the other side that culture is not permitting. We are also doing our best and talking to the opinion leaders in the various communities and they are also helping us. But I would say it is also not reflecting as per 
the results that we are looking at here. But Very we well. Now, let, let me go to Skype now. And Augustine, at this point, I would want to ask you if our appeal to our cultural sense is not yielding the kind of results that we want is a time to take radical measures like we have seen in china like we have seen in india as far as controlling births is concerned uh, we, we don't necessarily have to uh, take drastic measures that, that that is not always the way to do uh, it doesn't help uh, people respond positively to policy we need to understand uh, the, the reasons surrounding um, the demand for more children. And the programmable areas are known. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Yes, the programmable areas are known. In the case of China, where uh, we brought in the one child policy, it is beginning to have a selling effect on them. So it is a lesson for the rest of the world that. Whenever you want to tackle population issues, uh, you don't come in with uh, laws. You are not so drastic. Cause it like uh, you are moving in the past. That is your job. Then maybe, Augustine, we should go the Imani way, keep quiet, the, the, strengthen the, the, the economy way, to accommodate everyone else that is born. The, the, the Imani way is the, 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 the mechanistic approach where the, the, the claim that uh, population growth is not a problem at all. There is a middle way that goes well. in everything exactly on population. Look at other areas. So even as we implement family planning programs, we try to improve the socioeconomic status of the people, especially uh, the, the, the situation of women. And it, it has been shown that uh, female education and participation in the labor force will always significantly reduce the number of children that uh, a Indeed. woman will, will have in her entire uh, reproductive cycle. So Indeed, I'm, I'm, I'm grateful for your time, Augustine. We'll have to leave our conversation here. Antoinette is here, and we'll wrap up with Antoinette quickly. Antoinette, where, where do you stand on that? Perhaps it's time we institute a policy that will control the births properly? I'm also not in favor of the um, policies, yes. I still feel the education should be more everybody should get involved both men and women because even some men even prevent their wives from coming in for family planning services so i think it's about time everybody gets on board to promote the family planning now just, services. just hold it there for me let's go to twitter now we're asking your thoughts as well as far as uh, this radical measure is concerned and these are your responses if we could look at it quickly now this curtain takes a while to open but well look at that the curtain just decided to go off his back. Now, according to the Ghana Statistical Service, Ghana's population is now estimated at 29.6 million with a growth rate of 2.5 annually. Do you think it's time to institute a radical population control policy? And these are the responses. Take a look. 62% say yes. Obviously, they disagree with you. And Augustine Antoinette, 62% of our unscientific uh, poll on Twitter says, look, it's time we institute radical population control policies. 26% of the respondents said uh, no, and 12% are undecided. If this is anything to go by, I'm sure you have a lot of work to do, but thank yes. you very much for thank coming through. Too. And uh, that'll be all for Insight. Let's talk about our sites over the next few minutes because at least 250,000 people infected with glaucoma in Ghana are unaware that they have the disease. Sadly, 60,000 of these infected persons have lost their sight completely. Here's William Evans' Incomes report. That story, uh, it will take a while to come. But if you do have any conditions with your sight, you should see the doctor. Uh, because 60,000 people losing their sight 
here, here in Ghana, this is not across the world, it's here in Ghana, is a big deal. Over 200,000 of us live with the cataracts without knowing about it. Let's take a look at that report by William Evans Inko. 34-year-old Alice Jew is a mother of five at Koligono, a suburb of Accra. Glaucoma remains one of the most challenging eye diseases for both doctors and patients in most parts of the world, including Ghana. According to experts, glaucoma is a group of eye disorders that show little or no symptoms in the early stages. Eventually, a lack of treatment leads to damage of the optic nerve, which can then lead to vision loss or complete blindness. Pathetically, its silence means many are unaware they have glaucoma. Prevention, they say, is better than cure. The reason these people have come to test their eyes. The silent thief of sight is without pain or symptoms, and this makes everyone susceptible. Regular eye checking, according to doctors, can ameliorate risk of losing sight. We must make these drugs which we use for the eye drop, for the glaucoma uh, medication or lowering the pressure available and affordable. Okay, and we must include some of these drops actually uh, in the essential list that people can easily buy. Cases that have advanced are brought to the theatre. At this stage, doctors will have to do everything possible to protect the eye from a blackout. These ophthalmologists, busy all the time, seeing to patients who have problems in the eyes, or for that matter, they want them corrected. But we are told that a number of them that turn up here have glaucoma-related issues, and they come at a time that they are almost losing their vision. Globally, it is believed that over 60.5 million people had glaucoma in 2010. In Africa, glaucoma accounts for 15% of blindness, and it is the region with the highest prevalence of blindness relative to other regions worldwide, considering the rapid growth of the world's population. It is even projected that the number of infection may go up to about 80 million by 2020. Well, now you have a reason to protect your sight. But it's time for business here on News Tonight. Kweku Timing is here with the latest. Kweku, how many children have you had already? <laughs> You've had well, two. Yeah, so um, really... Contributing uh, to the population. Okay, so uh, maybe at this point I should be pausing because obviously it wouldn't, uh, I shouldn't add on more. And it's amazing how we keep emphasizing uh, those who are educated or have had some level of education are uh, controlling birth whilst uh, uh, those oh, But it's good for business. Isn't it? In the olden days, the more children you had, the more fertile okay. your farm. So this is the 21st and century, so, yeah, actually. If you, if you start a business, you can put your children no, in there. We just went <laughs> three or four. They can handle um, multi-businesses and <laughs> you can trust me. So you don't need so many children like you needed uh, during uh, back in the days where you needed farm hands. Very and well. Like. Tell us what's happening in business. All right. So, Kevin, there's been a lot of back and forth with the bulk oil storage and the whole issues surrounding the distribution of some crude oil. We'll give you updates on that, but more importantly, it's about Ghana's public debt. When we come back, we'll tell you the impressions of the IFS. We're back shortly with all these details and more. Don't Do stay with us. We see a millionaire in you. We're looking for you, the next millionaire. We know of your stressful routine. From those 12-hour flights across the Atlantic to your hustle through traffic every day. From burning the midnight oil to that laptop that never sleeps. We know where you are in life and we know where you want to go. Let us take you there. Thinking investment? Think Dusk Capital. Dusk Capital. We see a millionaire in you. Your 
laptop. It, it is not working. Hey, 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 hey. What at all is going on in this house? Your son's laptop is not working and my phone. Make kai me more fabric. Now me mama di me ko Freddy's corner. Anything and ne aye me nije. So me di Freddy's corner huwa dance. I chew me busia. Now dear ba kuwa me kai wo Freddy's corner. Aye se di busi ti wo nim. Aje ju wo customers. Se eba mobile phone, eba laptop papa, camera papa ni PlayStation na. Hey, your friend is gonna aha in the world. So come back to your mobile phone and say, your camera say, your laptop and say, and our PlayStation. Me ha ho kwa. Friend is gonna be trying to go out now. Friend is gonna your home of authentic mobile phones and accessories. All right, so let's do some business now. The bulk oil storage and transportation company, Bost, has dismissed claims by the Chamber of Petroleum Consumers, insisting Bost has caused financial loss to the state in a transaction. Bost transacted with an unlicensed company. While addressing the media, head of fuel trade, Albert Mante, indicated that crude sold to BB Energy was 942,000 barrels and not the 1.8 million as quoted by Kopec. Head of field trade at Bost accused Kopec of unduly targeting the company in its smear campaign since assuming office. Albert Mante at a news conference said Kopec boss Duncan Amwa is ignorant. Mante explained Amwa will not accuse Bost of causing financial loss to the state if he understood the trade of crude. His so-called allegation, which I will not call it allegation, because they are total display of lack of understanding of what happens in the oil industry. COPEC faulted Bost for selling its products at a discount of $2 at the time crude oil prices were going up on the world market. To that, Bost said it reserves the right to give discounts to any company it deems fit. I want to put it on record that it is not out of place in the commodity market to give discount. If you are buying anything and you are ready to pay cash, you are ready to do, instead of 90 days, 120 days, you are ready to do early settlement, you can be granted discount because there's value for money. You can invest the money earlier and get returns instead of waiting for the 90 days or 120 days or whatever credit period you have granted. And so giving discount is not out of place in this commodity business. He also responded to the death allegation made by Duncan Amwa. Duncan Amwa is alleging that the so-called informant or who came to threat him now identify him as a friend of the managing director, Mr. Alfred Ovin. Even if he's supposed to go and do anything, I think that he'll keep the identity of the person secret. So this is very childish, if I call it. It's baseless, fallacious, and untruth. Just there to tarnish the image of the managing director. As far as Mante is concerned, Bost has not engaged in any shady deal. On the contrary, it is working hard to make fuel in Ghana one of the best in the world. All right, so let's try to get some reaction from Parliament. Here, Parliament Select Committee on Mines and Energy is expected to meet management of BOST over allegations of financial loss to the state. That's in the trade of its crude oil. Well, Executive Director of the Chamber of Petroleum Consumers, that's Duncan Amor, has alleged that the bulk oil storage and transportation lost over 20 million CDs for selling crude to an unlicensed company at a discounted rate. The minority in Parliament is demanding investigations into the matter. Speaking to GH1 News, Chairman for Mines and Energy Committee, Emmanuel Akwesi-Jemfi, supported the call by the minority, adding that the committee is scheduled to meet the management of BOSS soon over the matter. If there are any wrong things at BOSS, this should be investigated, or it is alleged. You see, the, the, the minority, who, I haven't gotten a, a couple of years, but in, in all, it is an allegation. 
that this has happened. So we need to get the, the, the proper information as to what they did was wrong or right. And that is maybe what they are calling for. If that is the case, I mean, you will support the investigation in the post. Because the post is... Let's move on to other matters now and here the Institute for Fiscal Studies has warned Ghana's ballooning public debt has now hit a distress level. While its executive director, Professor Newman Kusi, said Ghana's public debt reached 137 billion Ghana cities at the end of 2017 and the figure is likely to increase to 140 billion cities within the first few months of 2018. Executive Director of the IFS, Professor Newman Kusi, disclosed that Ghana faces a high-risk debt distress as the public debt situation continues to worsen. According to him, the situation is already placing significant burden on the economy and that the country is at risk of falling back into an extended debt trap. Adding the ESLAP PLC 4.7 billion cities bond issued in late October last year and the sale of 5.3 billion long-term bonds also issued at the end of November last year, of which nearly half consisted of fresh borrowing and the other half treasury bills that were restructured into long-term bonds, brings the total public debt to about 146.2 billion at end November last year. Ghana's total public debt as a percentage of GDP dropped from a high of 113.1% in year 2000 to 26.2% in year 2006, mainly driven by the HIPIC relief. With the Ghanaian economy preparing to rebase, analysts believe Ghana's debt to GDP ratio is expected to drop significantly, but senior lecturer at the Department of Economics at the University of Ghana, Dr. Eric Osei Sibe, cautioned this should not lead to more borrowing. Currently we are doing about 16%. If you rebase, you are likely to go to about 12%. So if you are going to be borrowing because you think now you have fiscal space, the question will be do you have enough revenue to repay? That is a critical issue. Founder and president of the IFS, Dr. Kobna Dufour called for dispassionate discussions on Ghana's debt situation, devoid of partisan sentiments. And let us come together as a nation and look at the public debt issue. Let's borrow at all cost. But let's let us ensure that we are using the money well, profitably. Let's have value for money. Otherwise, in the future, our children your children, my children, something else. Economists from the IFS have explained 41 pesos of each city that the government mobilizes as revenue is being spent to pay interest on debt and this, if not addressed, will leave the country vulnerable to shocks. All right, so business is made right here on GH1 TV. We're back shortly with the more. Thanks to Dusk Capital. Business Brief is brought to you by Dusk Capital. We see a millionaire in you. Now, Namibia's health minister said on Tuesday it had recorded its first case of listeriosis in the biggest recorded outbreak of which has killed over 180 people and infected 970 in neighboring South Africa. According to Haufiku, the man ate a sausage he bought at a butcher shop in Sumab, north of uh, the country, which is believed to be the source of the toxic bag. Last week, Namibia suspended imports of processed meats from South Africa after the outbreak was linked to a factory that makes polony a cheap sausage. Well, that'll be all for tonight. I'm grateful for your company. My name is Kemeni Amano. Bye-bye.